This video is going to show you how to draw a cross section. Uh, you're asked to draw a cross section between two spot heights. Spot height 515 in block L13 and spot height 446 in block K14. So the first step that you need to do is you need to connect these two spot heights with a pencil line. Do not use a very thick pencil line, a very fine one, because you must be able to see the contours it crosses. So that's the first step you're going to do. So again, you can see I've connected spot height 515 and spot height 446 with a thin pencil line. The next thing is, before you start doing anything, look at how the landscape changes along this line. So you can see there's a spot height, and this is the index. I like using index contour. And you can see there's another spot height, 409, and that's also index. So it means these two are 400. So you can see we're going down in this direction. But if you look carefully, there's a little stream there. So if it means that we go down until we reach the stream, so that will be 440, 420, 400, 380. And can you see, then this one will again be 380. There it crosses to 400. So there's a little top of the mountain. And then you can see what happens. Are we going up or are we going down again? Now, often you will have to look a bit wider just, than just along the line. So if you can see, for example, there is 280. That means we all agree, hopefully, that this is the direction of height increase. If you look at how the 280, so that means that's the 300 contour line. Can you see there is a 300 contour line? So it means from this 400 here, we're going down again. So that will be 380, 360, 340, 320. But look carefully at this 320 here. You can see there it turns around. Now what happens with it? Does it just disappear? Now what happens is that 320 is here underneath the row. You can see there is claim dwarf refi. So this 320 contour line does not disappear from your map. It's just there's a place name. In this case, a river name printed on top of it. So can you see it also crosses the 320 twice. Then we go up again. 340, 360, 380. And you can see there is an index contour. 400. 420, 440, 460, 480. And there you can see is our 500. So before you start doing anything, make sure that you understand what is happening to the values of the contour lines along this cross section. Then what you do is you take a piece of paper and the first two things I mark is my start point and my end point. And I know this one is 446 and this one is 515. Okay. Another thing is, do not move this. And if you move it along, it's very easy and you just align it again. Okay. So, whether you start at this side or that side, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm go going to work from 515 across to 446. Okay. So, now look. You can see there is an index contour crossing there. And this will be my 500. There's 480, 460, 440, 420, and this is 400. And just like in a map, can you see the index contours? I use a bit of figure line. The reason why is it's to help me. So this is 20, this is 40, this is 60, this is 80. I usually just use 2, 4, 6, and 8 because there's usually not enough space for you because contours are often closely spaced to write out the full values. Okay, so I'm now at 400. 
and you can see we're going then downwards towards the Klein Dwarf River. So this will be 380, 360, 340. And you can remember when I, I explained, you can see the 4, 320 is crossed twice in this cross section. So what I usually do to help myself with two consecutive contours got the same value, I use my own symbols and say that's a 320. So this will be 40, 60, 80. So once we've crossed the Klein Dwarf River, we're going up again towards this 400. So that's 320, 40, 60, 80. So 40, 60, 80. And can you see, again, it crosses the 400 contour twice. Then it goes down again towards this little stream there. So this will be 380. Again, this will also be 380. Because you can see that is my 400 index. So these two contours have exactly the same value. 380, 420, 440, and that's my 446. So you end up with a piece of paper with little markings like this. You need to work out your own method. How are you going to remember what are the values? You could see one I've used. And then the next step for you is to transfer this onto a piece of paper. Now, I'm going to use graph paper. I will also show you what to do if you do not have graph paper. Okay, so there's my piece of graph paper. And it means each of these big blocks represents one centimeter. So my lowest value is 320. My highest value is 5. 15 and what I normally do is I start at one value lower so I'm going to start at 300 so always we start here at zero we indicate there's a scale break so 300 320 340 360 420, 440, 460, 480, 500. My highest value is 515, so I'm going to stop at 520. Then what you do is you take these, this piece of paper with the marks and you align it like this. There we go. And I'm just going to zoom in again to show you a bit more detail. So I end up with my graph paper, or if you've only got normal writing paper, I will just show it to you now. So you can see I align it there. This value is 515. So each centimeter is 20 meters, so halfway through would be 510, and halfway through between 510 and 520 will be my 5. So that's my start mark, 515. Then another requirement of doing a cross section is to carry the values perpendicular, meaning at a 90 degree angle, to your uh, cross section. So what I usually do is I use a ruler to do this. So you can see, and it's very important, you mustn't uh, hold your ruler skew. You must make sure that this is exactly a perpendicular above the mark. So perpendicular above this mark, this mark says it's 500. So exactly perpendicular, I know there is 500. Then I move my ruler a bit further, and you will see the 480 four 
480 is very close. There, that one is 480. It's very close to the 500. So this one is 480. So right on the 480 line. The next one is 3, 460. I do a little more. This one will be 440. And I make my little mark. This will be 420. And I make my little mark. And this one here will be 400. So right opposite 400, I make my mark. Then we go st still a bit lower. This one will be 380. And there's a bit of a gap. Now you will see there is 360, and you continue doing this, carrying all these marks over to this. Now I'm going to show you the end product. So remember, there were a couple of contours that had were the same value, and they were close to each other. So you can see, there's my two 320s. So. Let me just align this very nicely. So there you can see, there's my two 320s. I also have two 400s. There's my two 400s. I also had here two 380s. And this is how you would do it. So at the end, I'm going to have uh, points where I carried over the height. And to complete the cross-section, I just connect them. Now, what about other features on this cross-section? Now, another tip is um, there are two rivers that crosses this cross-section and so on. I'm going to zoom in again. I would give you the advice, first complete the contours. You can always go back to your cross-section to indicate what other features occur along this cross-section. So again, I would align it like this. And you will see the first one exactly here. You can see there is a river. You can see there, exactly there, there is a hiking, a hiking trail. You can see there, exactly there, there's another river. And, oh, there, very close to the hiking trail, is a power line. And you can see if you want to, but this is an imaginary line, it's no, this is uh, the Kugelberg Nature Reserve. It might be that there is a fence, so nature reserve. So how do you indicate this then on your cross-section? Similar exactly what you've done with the um, contour lines. You just carry it over. So that's why I say first complete your cross-section and only afterwards you do, uh, for example. So exactly here, perpendicular, there would be my first river there would be my second river, and it makes sense because these are river valleys. Okay, so right here, there would be my hiking trail, and very close to it, there would be my power line, and right here, that would be the fence for the nature reserve. So, to indicate features, go back, use the same piece of paper, go and make marks. You can see exactly here, there's a river, so the river will be there. So, you carry this over like you would have for a cross-section. Right on top, perpendicular, there is my hiking trail, there is my power line, there is my other river, and you can see exactly here, there would be my nature reserve fence. So if I ask you, for example, what is X? 
then you know X is the nature reserve boundary. If you do not have um, graph paper, you use a normal piece of paper like this, and you follow exactly the same steps. The only thing is, do not use the lines on um, normal paper. Please do raw regular paper. Again, make marks every centimeter because the chances are good you need to be also able to calculate a vertical scale. So you see, I've chosen my own vertical scale and I've chosen one centimeter equals 20 meters. And just like you did for on the graph paper, you are going to perpendicularly carry over this mark. So you, again, this one is 520, halfway through is 510, so I will start here. And again, I would advise you, use your ruler and remember, perpendicular at a 90 degree angle. So the next one will be right opposite, there is 500. And the 480 is very close. You will see right across, uh, opposite this mark is my 480. Then there's my 460. Opposite of 460. And you would continue doing this, transferring all these little marks onto normal paper where you have indicated the scale as one centimeter equals 20 meters. And then you will end up with exactly a similar looking cross section. You can see. If I put them to get, uh, next to each other, they look exactly the same. Whether you use graph paper or whether you use normal uh, exam pad paper or in an exam book or whatever, the only thing is, please remember, do not use these blue lines. Use your own scale, one centimeter equals 20 meters. And then afterwards, you can go and also indicate what natural or what man-made features that stands out crosses the cross-section and you carry them over like you would the contour lines.